What's happening, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Hey, man, I'm cool, man. Look like you somewhere uh, relaxing and, 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 and maxing and all that type stuff. I haven't seen you in a few hundred years, man. I know, man. How are you, man? You've been good? Man, look here, man. I'm, I'm arrive, alive on arrival. I, I, I haven't seen you since you cut your locks, man. The locks gone or what? Oh, no, no. They're here. Okay, they're okay. Here. You got them like me. Just push back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're here. Word, word. Yeah, man. man, definitely glad to have you on um, last yeah. minute. For folks who are unaware, I know Jared just mentioned uh, uh, some of your work as a poet and spoke, sp spoken word artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, definitely a phenomenal artist on that level. But um, many folks don't know you are a former attorney. Um, you are... Uh, has been serious in the uh, uh, sustainability community as well with solar energy. And I know that, um, you know, you've been working on, you have your herbal company. So if you could, you know, briefly give us a, uh, a, a correct bio because of the fact that um, I don't think I've done you any justice in those few seconds. Yeah. Um, I, I think probably the bio is less important than what we have to talk about, but yeah, I'm, I'm a, um, former attorney, practiced law for some time, and then became a spoken word artist and did that professionally for about a decade. Um, traveled the world, uh, became an entrepreneur as well. Um, am a card-carrying Pan-Africanist. Uh, I, I live in uh, Ghana, Rwanda, and the United States, so I travel freely between um, all three places. Uh, right now I'm in the United States, I'm in Florida, and um, uh, I started an herbal company in 2015 after I started doing research on medicinal cannabis and started uh, doing my own uh, extractions and learned uh, plant extraction techniques very well. Started lecturing around the world on um, the endocannabinoid system and um, cannabinoids and how they can reverse major illnesses, particularly cancer. I um, was inspired by a documentary I saw on uh, YouTube called Run From Cure about Rick Simpson, who was a man in Canada who was reversing the cancer of over 2,000 people. And uh, so when I found that out, I thought that was very interesting. So I have a science background. So I started doing my own research and my own uh, experimentations with extractions. He was using uh, naphtha, which is a paint thinner, which is a hydrocarbon, uh, which if you don't boil all of it off, it can be carcinogenic. So uh, I developed a different technique using coconut oil because uh, of the properties of cannabinoids being fat soluble. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. But what happened was, is that I started uh, giving presentations on how people can make their own cannabis oil around uh, the United States and around the Caribbean. And uh, I would end up getting a line of people uh, telling me about their, you know, their grandmother, their mother, their wife, they themselves uh, having cancer and wanting the oil. And because it was, uh, and still is federally legal, I couldn't mail it to people. So I would try to show people how to make, make it. People didn't want to make it. They wanted to pay me a lot of money to send my oil to them. And because I didn't want to be in somebody's courtroom uh, day in and day out, I had better things to do. I started researching another plant to see uh, if it could uh, do what cannabis does in terms of reversing major illnesses. And I uh, found olive leaf extract, which is the extract, the medicinal extract from the leaves of an olive tree. And uh, further research showed me that uh, it reversed high blood pressure, reversed diabetes, um, and it did that a lot better than cannabis uh, itself and cannabis oil. Uh, cannabis oil is very good for cancer, but a lot of people couldn't handle the high. So then I also found research that uh, olive leaf extract kills cancer cells between nine and 12 days. And um, so what I did as any good scientist would do is I used my own uh, experiments on myself first. I suffered from eczema and asthma since I was a child. And um, it got rid of my asthma. The olive leaf extract that I started, you know, extracting with my own techniques, it got rid of my asthma and it got rid of my um, eczema as well. And I'm saying within like maybe a few days. And so I then made it available to friends and family who were suffering from high blood pressure, kidney failure, and diabetes and started 
seeing that it was getting results, like real results with people with numbers. I mean, like people who had like blood pressure of 170 over 100 and they would take the olive leaf extract that I made in my kitchen and in 24 hours, their blood pressure would normalize to like 127 over 72, which is a very good blood pressure. Same thing with high blood sugar. And then um, it came to a head when uh, people with cancer started contacting me, letting me know that the olive leaf extract I was making had reversed their prostate cancer, breast tumors and what have you. And so these videos are for people to see um, online on, on the website, herbalresults.net as to, you know, the science behind uh, how we do what we do with olive leaf extract and also testimonials of people who have um, had very good results, health outcomes uh, from epileptic seizures to breast tumors to prostate cancer to uh, high blood pressure and kidney failure and all of that is, is on the website for people to see. And so we are here today where um, I mass produce the products and, um, and putting together a factory in Rwanda and Ghana as well. Right now, our factory is in the United States and we distribute to the rest of the world. But to make the price cheaper for our people in Africa, I'm setting up factories so it'll be uh, a much uh, more affordable price point for people because uh, when you ship into countries, you have to you know, pay for shipping and also customs duties. So to get around that, just put the factory where the people are. So that's where we are right now. And I know I've spoken a lot. I won't give you a chance to ask some questions, but I do want to get on to um, into um, a conversation about COVID and how um, it works and um, what the government and what the public health officials are not telling us about COVID and how we could actually treat ourselves before any hospitalization occurs through the mechanism of action of an RNA virus. So um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about, but I do want to get to that point. Hey man, listen, um, that, that wasn't planned, but it's always good to hear, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, you know, so yeah, let, let's, um, I mean, delve into that, delve into that, okay. tell, tell us. Um, yeah, yeah, I want your listeners to listen to this very carefully because this is information that they can use and spread and they can confirm it, do Google searches on everything that I'm saying, and then you can apply it in your own life and, you know, help your family and help yourself, and help your friends. So here's the deal. Um, in 2019, December 2019, I started hearing about um, COVID, uh, coronavirus uh, spreading in Wuhan, China. And so, you know, I didn't really take it too seriously. Um, you know, every now and then you'd hear about these viruses happening in terms of, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, mad cow's disease, foot and mouth disease, H1N1 virus, the bird flu, this and that. So I thought it was one of those types of things. And it just started picking up a lot of steam. So by January 2020, I started to do some research on coronaviruses to find out what it was all about. And um, this COVID-19 virus is uh, a coronavirus, as people used to call it, until, you know, people start using the word COVID. And um, they all behave in the same way in terms of mechanism of action because they're what you call RNA viruses. So um, when you talk about uh, nucleic acids, uh, in terms of gene expression, you have RNA and you have DNA. RNA um, copies itself in a backwards manner, as opposed to DNA copying itself through a forward manner. So they have different ways of, of, of acting. So coronaviruses all fall into the family of RNA viruses, and they all behave the same way. And what happens is, is that all of viruses, is a, it's a nucleic acid that is covered by a protein sheath. And what happens is it's not alive, it's not a living thing, but it's a parasite where, you know, in the sense that it replicates itself. But the only way that it replicates itself is by invading the cell. So imagine you have a virus and then you have a cell, right? And what happens is the virus invades the cell and then hijacks an apparatus inside of the cell called an RNA polymerase. It's also referred to as a replicase. And that's how it replicates itself. And it replicates itself over time. It's a function of time. It just copies itself, copies itself, copies itself. It hijacks the RNA polymerase that acts like a Xerox machine, copies itself, copies itself. And what happens is, is that all of us have millions, if not billions of viruses inside of our bodies right now, but our immune systems keep all of the viruses in check. What happens is, is that if there's a virus that the immune system can't recognize, it tries to use its memory. So the immune system is actually based on memory. 
And when you talk about strengthening your immune system, you're actually talking about strengthening the memory capacity of your immune system. It's trying to remember old viruses and what it looks like and how it can block it based on the formulation of how that virus looks like. And so the immune system is used to coronaviruses. Coronaviruses are old and actually 40% of the common cold is of all common colds are coronaviruses. So coronaviruses are nothing new. And that's why when it started happening, people started seeing coronavirus on um, Lysol bottles that it kills coronaviruses and all of that because this COVID-19, COVID-2019 virus, this novel virus is just in the family of coronaviruses. So here it is, it's replicating itself, but it takes some time because the immune system is still trying to block this virus and deal with this virus and it's replicating, replicating itself. And if your immune system cannot keep up with the replication, that's when you start to get sick. That's when you start to develop the symptoms. That's why you come in contact with someone with the virus and they say it takes a week or two before you start getting sick. So it has an incubation period. But what they're not telling you is that during that incubation period, that's when it's replicating. But when it reaches a certain viral load, that's when you start getting sick. So when you have a global pandemic around an RNA virus, there are three ways to deal with it. The first way is to build your immune system. And what the public health officials have not told you, and this is all confirmable, is that the best way to build your immune system is vitamin D. We get that from sunlight. And so what we find out is, is that um, if you look at the death statistics uh, for all years, uh, before and even uh, during the uh, COVID, you find that the most deaths happen in three months. The most deaths in the United States happen in November, December, and January. And that is what is referred to as flu season. But that is, that's what they tell us, but because our educational system is terrible and it's failed us, it doesn't teach us how to thrive in any way. Instead of saying flu season, they should say it properly, that's low vitamin D season because that's when the sun is out the least. It gets darker, quicker, people are inside because it's colder and people are getting sicker because they're not getting vitamin D, which is basically the nutrient food for your immune system. So you could either be out in the sun more or you would take vitamin D supplement, uh, usually with K2. K2 is another, uh, and vitamin D isn't actually vitamins, it's a hormone. So when you start talking about hormones, you're talking about some complex biological functions that are happening simultaneously. So it's a very complex thing. But one, people should have been told about vitamin D. That's the first thing you do in a global pandemic um, that's dealing with the virus. You strengthen your immune system and make it smarter. That's vitamin D. Everyone should have been told to take vitamin D. And as a matter of fact, there's a study done in Indonesia, and then there's been more studies done. And they found out that 98% of the people, these were post-mortem studies, 98% of the people who were, who were classified as dying from COVID were vitamin D deficient. 98% of the people, okay? So it shows you that the immune systems of these people were weak and they succumbed to the illness. So that's the first thing that should have been done. The second thing that is done is that you have to stop viral replication. So how do we stop viral replication? I just explained earlier how RNA viruses replicate themselves. They replicate themselves by hijacking the RNA polymerase, which is an apparatus within the cell. What is really interesting for your listeners is, is that zinc zinc like the zinc that you can take as a supplement yes stops the rna polymerase from replicating the virus the zinc shuts down the rna polymerase it stops the photocopying machine right the problem is that zinc has what you call two positive ionic charges and so the polarity of zinc does not allow it to readily go into the cell so zinc is like in your bloodstream but it's it's not in your cell so it, it does not readily go into the cell, but when it does enter the cell, it shuts off the, the Xerox machine for the virus to copy itself. Now, there are um, a class of compounds that allow zinc to rush into the cell, and those compounds are called zinc ionophores. Zinc ionophores are literally the gate openers for zinc in terms of the cell membrane. It opens up the gate to let zinc rush into the cell to do its job by shutting off the replication of the virus. So the question is, so what's this, what, what things are zinc ionophores? There are natural zinc ionophores. So I'm gonna give a list to people. 
Um, of course, olive leaf extract happens to be a zinc ionophore. So this is not for people to go out there and go to my website to buy olive leaf extract. If you don't want to buy olive leaf extract or you don't want to get olive leaf extract, there are other things that are, or for some reason you don't like me and you don't like the way I talk or whatever, or the way I walk or my po what I've done and whatever. Um, you don't have to get it from me. There are other companies that make olive leaf extract, but you can also get quercetin. Quercetin is onion extract but they call it quercetin. You can go to Whole Foods because many of you probably won't mind giving money to Whole Foods. So you can get it at Whole Foods. You can go to quercetin and get Whole Foods. You can go to Whole Foods and get quercetin. It is a zinc ionophore. It will open up the um, channels of the cell to allow zinc to run rush into the cell. You can use a compound that is referred to as ECGC and you get that from green tea or black tea extract has ECGC. E then you have O-European that comes from olive leaf extract. That is the um, that is the active ingredient that is a zinc ionophore. You also have curcumin, which is part of turmeric. It's the active ingredient in turmeric. So you can get turmeric and that will also be a zinc ionophore. You can also get clove oil, ginger. You can get artemisia, basil, bay leaf, bay leaf, or cinnamon oils. They all have a compound called eugenol. Eugenol is a zinc ionophore. Thyme oil is a zinc ionophore. Citrus oil is a zinc ionophore. And then if you are unfortunately taken to the hospital and the hospital doesn't deal with any natural things, so you'd have to get synthetic drugs, you would ask for ivermectin, which is a zinc ionophore, or hydroxychloroquine, which has been very controversial, but it is a zinc ionophore. The fact that Trump liked it and touted it does not make the, the scientific reason for it null and void because you hate Trump. Hydroxychloroquine, when they did the studies on hydroxychloroquine, it was very interesting because when I read the studies, luckily that I have a science background, so I read these studies and I'm looking at it. Number one, they use toxic levels of hydroxychloroquine uh, in, the, in the clinical trials that they were they were doing. They did it on purpose and they gave it to people in the late stages when people already had what you would call a hyperinflammatory response. They have coagulation of mucus in their lungs. That is not the mechanism of action where a zinc ionophore is going to work. A zinc ionophore helps by stopping the replication of the virus. But if it's gotten so late in the process, a zinc ionophore is not what's going to help you at that moment. You're gonna need something that is highly anti-inflammatory and to deal with the mucus that's being built up in your lungs. But at the very beginning stages, because it takes over a week before you would have to be hospitalized because it's just, so what happens is people start feeling sick. And what most people do when they start feeling sick, like symptoms of a cold, they take cold medicine right? Or they start getting headaches and fever and they'll take Tylenol. None of these are zinc ionophores. So if people were told from the very beginning of this, take zinc and add a zinc ionophore with it, a zinc door opener with it. Let it be quercetin, let it be olive leaf extract. Any of those things that I, that I named, if you take it right when you're getting sick, it will stop the replication of the virus and allow your immune system to do the rest of the job. But because people's immune systems are shot through lack of exposure to sunlight because most of us are indoors more than we would have been generations ago through office work or what have you quarantine made things actually ironically worse so people were trapped in nursing homes people trapped indoors and not getting any type of sunlight and then so they're not making any vitamin d and then they're not told how to stop the replication of an rna virus which is by using zinc and a zinc ionophore so I just want people to know out of this conversation, and I, you know, I do clarifications on Facebook on my page to, for people to know that the moment that you start feeling sick, the absolute moment that you start feeling sick, like everyone knows when you start coming down with a cold, that's when you know that if it is COVID or if it's not COVID, you can treat it all the same way because 40% of common colds are coronaviruses. So what you do, the moment you start getting sick, you get zinc, and the zinc that I recommend is a form of zinc called zinc picolinate. Picolinate is the most bioavailable form of zinc. 
So you're going to get zinc. And what you do is you just will take, if you start feeling sick, you'll take double or triple what the recommended dosage is. And then you will take your zinc ionophore along with that, which it would be quercetin or olive leaf extract. You're going to take double the recommended dosage because you're sick at that moment. You want to stop the replication of the virus. That's what you're going to do. And this is what is going to stop hospitalization. Because when you get to the hospital, they don't really have anything for you. What they're going to do is they're going to give you a steroid. And the steroid is supposed to stop inflammation, but you should have been told that you could take an anti-inflammatory drug or an anti-inflammatory plant already. I mean, we favor the natural side of things. And so I always tell people because of the side effects of synthetic drugs, they're always going to cause major side effects. All synthetic drugs are going to cause major side effects because they are man-made. They're not made by nature. Our bodies are not man-made. Our nature, our bodies are made by nature. So we respond better to natural um, remedies. But if you have to take a synthetic remedy because you don't have a natural remedy, a synthetic remedy would be ivermectin or a hydroxychloroquine along with zinc. You see, when they did these studies, first of all, a lot of studies they did on hydroxychloroquine, they actually had to retract the studies due to fraud. The Lancet Journal and the New England Journal of Medicine, they had to print retractions because they found out that the studies that they were publishing were actually fraudulent studies. People were making up the hospital statistics, the statistics because when people back check and check the hospitals where they said they were getting data of people dying from taking hydroxychloroquine, when they called the hospitals, the hospital said, we, we don't have any such information. That was completely made up and hey, they had to retract it. Hey, Haru, listen, man. Um, I, we, we, I I lost track of time because I, I I start listening to what you're saying, getting all deep into it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have to definitely bring you back on. Um, uh, we we couldn't have done this in 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I know, I know. You know. Because I mean, the fact is, you know, we didn't even plan on going this route, no. but it's a necessary route because yeah. of the fact that, that that's the order of the day. So I'm gonna hit you up, and um, you know, we could do a full length. You know what I mean? Because of the fact that. Uh, what you're saying is is definitely necessary, especially when it comes to um, those of us who are interested in um, maintaining our um, immune system and, and and boosting it and building it up and defending ourselves against um, some of these um, uh, foreign uh, uh, attacks, shall I say? You know what right. I mean. So definitely, I appreciate you. What is your website? Give us your website real quick yeah, and. Um, People can go to herbalresults.net, H-E-R-B-A-L-R-E-S-U-L-T-S.net. Um, we have information on there for people. They can go through the scientific studies. They can look at the products and look at the testimonials and all that good stuff. But, you know, the key that I want more than my website is for people to just Google zinc ionophores and their role in stopping viral replication. That is the most important thing that people could do because once you find this out, you'll be able to empower yourself and heal yourself. Hey, Haru, brother, love you, man. Always appreciate right, man. you. You know what I'm saying? Your, your work is, uh, I mean, you're consistent. I, 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 I always appreciate and respect those of us who, uh, you know, who, who keep that consistent line, man. So definitely uh, look for, uh, I'll be in contact with you today, brother. No problem, man. No doubt. Thanks for coming on. All right. You're checking right, out the Remix that. Morning Show that was my brother Heru Ofori Ata. And he's always dropping them jewels or whatever. So uh, we'll be right back at you. Remix Morning Show. You know what it All is. Right.